All right, welcome back. This time we're going to be talking about Rolle's theorem. And Rolle's theorem says this, let the function f be differentiable on the open interval from a to b and continuous on the closed interval from a to b. And then if the value of a on the function is equal to the value of b on the function, then there is at least one number c on that open interval such that the derivative at that point c is equal to zero. So what this is saying is that if we have two points on a graph that have two different x values, but they have the same y value, there's going to be at least one value of x between these two points where the slope is zero. And so let's see if that was true, right? If I were to connect these points with a straight line, well, the slope of a straight line is zero, so that holds true. There would be an infinite amount of points between a and b where the slope is zero. But what if we drew a line like this and we connected them kind of in this fashion. Well, now we're gonna have two different points, one point here and one point here where the slope is going to be zero, right? If we were to draw a tangent line at those two points, we would see that the slope at those points is going to be zero, right? The slope of a straight line. And let's try connecting them one other way. Let's see if we go back, let's try connecting it a different way. What if I connected these two points like this? Do I still have a point between A and B where the slope is zero? The answer is yes, I'm still gonna have it. It's gonna be right about here, right? If I were to draw another tangent line at that point, we would see that the slope at that point is zero. And so no matter how you go about this, no matter what kind of line you draw between these two points where that function is differentiable and continuous, meaning we're not gonna have any asymptotes in here or we're not going to draw a V shape, right? We could also connect these points by drawing a graph like that. And that is typically your absolute value function. But remember that that point there is not differentiable. So that's where this part of our theorem comes into play. So we can't draw that kind of line, but any other kind of line that you would draw between these two points is going to have some point along that line where the slope is zero. That is the whole idea of what Rolle's theorem is. And so what we like to do with Rolle's theorem is we like to take functions and give an interval and try to find what those values of C are where the slope is zero. And so let's look at an example where we verify that this theorem works. So here we have that we want to verify Rolle's theorem. We have the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2, and we are interested in the interval from 1 to 2. And then we want to find all values c such that the derivative at that point is equal to 0. So the first thing we want to do when we verify Rolle's theorem is we want to check our endpoints, right? The most important part of Rolle's theorem is that the two points that we are trying to connect a line between, where we're trying to find a slope of zero somewhere between them, is that those two points have the same height, that they have the same y value. So we have to make sure that each one of these endpoints outputs the same value when plugged into our original function. So that's the first thing we're going to check. So we'll start with our lower endpoint. We'll start with one, and then we'll plug in two. And f of one is going to be equal to one squared minus three times one plus two. And that will be equal to one minus three plus two. And so then one minus three is negative two plus two would equal zero. And so now let's plug in two. And if two also equals zero when plugged into our function, then we're good. Then we can use Rolle's theorem. But if it doesn't, if there are two different values, Rolle's theorem does not apply here. So we're gonna have f of two, and that's gonna be equal to two squared minus three times two plus two, All right? We just plug two into this function here, and that's going to be equal to four minus six plus two, and four minus six would be negative two, and then plus two is going to be equal to zero. So this checks out. We can check off both of these endpoints, right? Rolle's theorem is going to apply here because these two points on this function have the same height, the same y value. That is very important for Rolle's theorem. And so now to find all of our values c such that the derivative at those points is equal to zero, we just have to take the derivative of our function. So we will have f prime of x is going to be equal to 2x, right? If we use our power rule for x squared, that's how we would take the derivative of it. We would have 2 times x and we would subtract 1 from our exponent, so we just have one, but we typically don't write variables to the first power, we just write the variable itself. And then a derivative of negative three x would be minus three, and then a derivative of two is just zero. So we don't need to write that. And now if we wanna find our values c, we're going to set this derivative equal to zero, and we're gonna swap out this x for c, right? We're solving for those values c where the derivative is zero. So what we're gonna do here is we will have that zero is equal to two 
c minus 3. So all we did was set our derivative equal to 0 and change our x to c so that we were solving for the values of c where the derivative will be 0. And then if we add 3 to both sides, we will have 3 equals 2c. And if we divide both sides by 2, we'll have that c is equal to 3 halves. And so this is our value of c, our only value of c, for this function on this interval where the derivative is 0. So if we plotted this function on a graph from the point 1, 0 and 2, 0, the value at 3 halves would be the only point on that function between those two points where the slope is 0. So as I mentioned earlier, Rolle's theorem states that the function must be differentiable on the open interval from a to b, and it has to be continuous on the closed interval from a to b. So the theorem does not hold for functions like the absolute value of x, where we look at the interval from negative 5 to negative 5, or the function cotangent of x divided by 2 from pi to 3 pi. Now these are just two examples for you to look at. There are plenty of other functions where Rolle's theorem does not apply, but these are just two that I thought I would show you so you kind of get an idea why. And I did briefly touch on this already. I said that the absolute value function has a non-differentiable point at x equals 0 here. And so between negative 5 and 5, we really don't have any points that have a slope of 0, right? Because this point doesn't have a slope. The slope is undefined. And so because of that, Rolle's theorem doesn't apply for this function. And it doesn't apply for this cotangent function because at 2 pi, we have an asymptote. And so there's no point between pi and 3 pi, which is our interval here, where the slope is 0, right? We're just going to keep getting closer and closer to 2 pi on this side, and we're going to keep getting closer to 2 pi on this side. But we're never going to touch it, and there's never going to be a point where this line crosses over to this side. That just doesn't happen with asymptotes. An asymptote is like a brick wall. It just stops everything. Nothing is going to get past it. And so there's no point C between pi and 3 pi where the slope is 0. So try to keep that in mind when you think about applying Rolle's theorem to different functions. If you see that a function is not going to be differentiable somewhere, or it's not going to be continuous, meaning it would have some kind of break in the function, such as an asymptote, then you cannot apply Rolle's theorem. So let's look at another example of using the theorem to find more values of c. So here we want to determine if Rolle's theorem can be applied to the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared. And we are looking at the interval from negative 2 to 2. And if the theorem can be applied, we want to find all values of c such that the derivative at those points is 0. And so the first thing we want to do is to check is this function continuous and differentiable on this interval. Now, just by looking at it, since it's not a rational function, it's going to be very unlikely that it's not continuous. It's typically when we have our rational functions where we have some kind of fraction where the denominator will cause some issues. But this is going to be continuous everywhere on negative 2 to 2. And it's also going to be differentiable. If you're ever stuck on whether a function is differentiable on an interval, all you have to do is take the derivative of that function and see where it's not continuous. Differentiability is the continuity of the derivative. You can think about it like that. And so in this case, if we took the derivative of our function, we would have that f prime of x is equal to 4x to the third power, right? That's just using our power rule on x to the fourth. Multiply by 4, subtract 1 from the exponent, and then we'll have minus 2 times 2 times x, and that would just be to the first power, right? We multiply 2 by 2 and subtract 1 from our exponent. And so this is equal to 4x cubed minus 4x. And so if you look at this function, this is also going to be continuous everywhere on this interval. So because of that, we can safely say that this function is both continuous and it's differentiable on the interval. So we like to make a note of that. I'll say it's continuous, and we'll say that it is differentiable. All right, so now that we've done that, the next thing that we want to do is we want to check our endpoints, right? Rolle's theorem is not going to apply if negative 2 and 2 are not at the same height or do not have the same y value for this function. So let's plug them in and see what happens. We'll start with f of negative 2, and that's going to be equal to negative 2 to the fourth minus 2 times negative 2 squared. And this is going to be equal to negative 2 to the fourth power, which is going to be 16 minus 2 times 4. So that's going to be 16 minus 8, which will be equal to 8. And if we plug in positive 2 into our function, we're actually going to get the same thing, right? We'll have 2 to the fourth minus 2 times 2 squared. So it's really the same thing because negative 2 squared and negative 2 to the fourth is the same thing as 2 to the fourth and 2 squared. So once again, we're just going to have 16 minus 2 times 4, which is 16 minus 8, which is equal to 8. So we can also check that off. Our endpoints are at the same height. They're at the same y value. 
And so now to find our values of c such that the derivative at those points is equal to zero, we can set our derivative that we found equal to zero and change our x's to c's. And so if we do that, we will have zero is equal to four c cubed minus four times c. And now let's solve for our values of c. I see that we're gonna have a common factor here of four c, right? I at least have a four c in this term and I also have it here. So if I pull out that four c, we'll have zero equals 4c times c squared minus one, right? We took out everything that this term had, that 4c, so we're left with just one, and we pulled out a four and a c from this term, so we're just left with c squared. And then we can set each of these parts equal to zero, so we'll have that 4c equals zero, which means c is gonna be equal to zero if we divided both sides by four. And then we'll have c squared minus one is equal to zero, which you should notice we can use the difference of squares to factor this, right? This is c squared minus one, which one is a square of one and c squared is a square of c. So we can factor this to be c plus one times c minus one, and that will be equal to zero. And so then what this tells us is that c will equal negative one and c will equal positive one. And so there we have it. We actually have three values of c in this case. We have c equals zero, c equals negative one, and c equals one. So we have three values of c such that the derivative at those points is equal to zero. So this was a good example to show you that there can be more than one value of c between two points on a function where the derivative would be zero. Let's look at one more example for this lesson. So finally, let's look at this function. We're gonna be doing the exact same thing we did with the last function, which is determine if Rolle's theorem can be applied to it on this interval, right? So we have the function x squared minus one divided by x, and we have the interval from negative one to one, and we wanna find all value c such that the derivative at those points is zero. And so the first thing that you wanna check is, is this function continuous and differentiable on this interval? Well, this is a rational function, right? So if I plug in zero into this denominator, right? If I wanna know the value of zero on this function, we're gonna get an undefined value because you cannot divide by zero. So if I plug zero in, this is undefined, which means this function will not be continuous at the point x equals zero. And so what we have to ask ourselves is, is that point on our interval? and it would be, because zero would be between negative one and one, right? And so because of that, this function is not continuous on this interval. And so since that fails, since this is not continuous, right? We checked continuity and that is a fail, then Rolle's theorem cannot be applied to this function. So we would just say that Rolle's theorem does not apply to f of x. And if you wanted to be more specific, you could say that it is not continuous at x equals zero, which is on negative one to one. And so that would be your answer in this case. You would just say that Rolle's theorem doesn't apply because it is not continuous on the interval. So we're not gonna be able to find all values of C such that the derivative at that point is zero. We just can't do it. All right, and so that's all I had for this lesson. If you want to see some more examples, I'll have an example video linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description. So you can check that out if you want to see some more examples. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, that is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.